you, Nate. Former President Trump wants more airtime. He's now pushing for his federal election fraud trial in Washington to be televised. That's because TV cameras are forbidden in federal courtrooms. Scripps News and other media outlets are also advocating for the case to be broadcast. The filing says the unprecedented case of a former American president standing trial on charges related to interfering with the 2020 election should be available for all to witness. Joining me now is Vanessa Gilmore. She's a former U.S. District Judge in Texas who served for nearly 28 years. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, this is a rarity. Donald Trump and news organizations on the same page, right? Um, so I guess the obvious benefit here for televising this trial is transparency. What is the judge considering in the decision? Well, the judge is bound by the federal rules of criminal procedure, which specifically prohibit cameras in the courtroom during criminal trials. Federal rule of criminal procedure was enacted in 1946, last updated in 2022 to remove the word radio, but no other substantive change. Uh, and the judge does not have the authority or ability to overrule a federal rule. That would be an activist uh, action on the part of the judge if they just decided not to abide by the federal rules of criminal procedure. And there are a number of reasons that uh, have been uh, discussed and examined over the years uh, for why we should not have cameras in the courtroom during criminal trials. So the Justice Department is against this request, saying the judge does not have the authority to change that policy and that televising the trial would create a, quote, carnival atmosphere. Why might prosecutors be against making it on TV? There, there would be a number of reasons. The carnival atmosphere, I guess, is one reason. Um, but there are a number of other considerations. For instance, the safety of the judge, the safety of the prosecutors, uh, and potentially the safety of witnesses and other persons who might be involved uh, in testifying in this case. Those are additional things that the court has to consider uh, with respect to uh, any request uh, that of this magnitude or of this nature. Uh, but the truth is the judge does not have the authority on their own, any no federal judge has the authority on their own to allow cameras in the courtroom during criminal proceedings. That is against the rules of, of evidence uh, and the, in, against the rules of criminal procedure. Uh, and so there is no authority uh, for them to do uh, something other than that. It would be a rulemaking issue. It would have to be something that would have to go back uh, to the um, Court Administration and Case Management Committee of the federal courts uh, for them to decide whether or not they wanted to enact a new rule or amend the existing rule that prohibits cameras in the courtroom. But there are a number of considerations besides just the carnival atmosphere, a safety being the most important one of them that I can think of. Could you see possibly a, a compromise where the judge allows, say, just live audio or, 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 or limited amounts of TV access? There is live audio that is allowed in some civil proceedings, for instance, bankruptcy, courts of appeals, the Supreme Court, all of those courts already allow live audio streaming, uh, but that has never been extended to date to the criminal courts for all the reasons that we've already discussed. There have been a number of trial programs over the years dating back as far as the 1970s to determine whether or not it might be a good idea to change this policy uh, in the federal courts. Uh, they, there have been trials that have been done out in California, some in Arizona, uh, and at the end of each of those trials, uh, the decision has been made by the Court Administration and Case Management Committee of the Federal Courts to not change the rule as it relates to criminal cases. There have been some modifications with respect to that rule in, uh, for instance, ceremonial proceedings like um, investiture ceremonies and swearing in of new citizens, uh, and also in some bankruptcy proceedings. And also uh, there is discretion for the courts of appeals in uh, civil cases, but never in the criminal context, because one of the things that you also have to consider is protecting the rights of the accused. And that is the foremost thing that the court has to take into consideration, the rights of the accused to be protected from uh, unnecessary media coverage of, a, of an event uh, is important. In this instance, this particular accused probably doesn't care about that, wants the media coverage. But the primary consideration of the court has to be to protect the rights of the accused, to not have unnecessary coverage of, of an event or of a trial where someone has been accused but not yet convicted. Uh, and so I think that those things are going to outweigh uh, any any 
effort by the part of the media or any individual defendant uh, to change the rules in this instance. But like you were just saying, if, you know, the accused in this instance is embracing it, he is clearly... Donald Trump embracing the role of martyr or victim and benefiting in terms of fundraising. It's essentially like campaigning for him to show up at these court appearances and for him to be on the stand in a federal trial with all those eyeballs, it'll only lift him up in his supporters' eyes even more. You know, it's, it's very different than what you would find in most cases with criminal defendants. Most, most criminal defendants, of course, as you said, would not want the uh, media coverage, would not want people uh, looking at their cases uh, while the jury is deciding whether or not uh, they are innocent or guilty of the crimes charged against them. This is a little bit different. But there's no reason to treat this defendant differently than any other criminal defendant. They have the same rights to be protected from the media, uh, from public scrutiny, uh, from excessive public uh, discussion or scrutiny. Uh, and so this is not a scenario where uh, this defendant should be treated any differently than uh, every other defendant that comes before the federal criminal courts for uh, the handling and disposition of their cases. Vanessa Gilmore, former U.S. District Judge, thank you so much for your time and your expertise. We appreciate it.